What's up everybody, Dr. Ossie Shrinks and Sneakers.com. I've been asked to cover another topic that I think is relevant. It's one that's really not talked about in psychiatry very much at all. And that is the topic of postpartum psychosis, the diagnosis and treatment. So we talk a lot in psychiatry about postpartum depression and postpartum blues, but we don't talk very much about postpartum psychosis, but it's very, re very relevant and it's very relevant to a certain group of people with a particular diagnosis. Start this conversation off. The postpartum period is a very difficult period for some patients. And women in this case are at increased risk of the onset of psychiatric illness. And those things could be things like mood disorders, anxiety, or even psychotic disorders. Now postpartum psychosis is most often seen in patients who have a diagnosis of bipolar disorder. So bipolar disorder predisposes one to postpartum psychosis. And we'll explain a little bit about why that might be and some of the overlapping things that we may see in both disorders. So bipolar disorder and postpartum psychosis, you want to make a connection there. Now, it can also occur in women with a diagnosis of major depressive disorder. It can occur in women with psychotic disorder like schizophrenia or schizoaffective disorder. Now, the clinical picture of this is similar to what you might think, right? It's going to be a rapid onset of psychiatric symptoms, specifically psychotic symptoms, that include things like hallucinations and delusions, bizarre behavior, confusion, disorganized speech as uh, that may appear in some cases like a delirium. So some practitioners say the OB doctors on the OB floor may think this is some type of delirium. This often constitutes a medical emergency and the reason it's a medical emergency is because in that state when someone is delusional, hallucinating, confused, potentially agitated, they may be a danger to themselves and more importantly they may be a danger to the newborn baby. So there are many risk factors for the development of postpartum psychosis. One of the major ones is a prior history of having postpartum psychosis in the past. So if you've had postpartum psychosis in the past, you are, you are at an increased risk of developing again in the future should you have another child. Also, if there's a family history of postpartum psychosis, obviously if there's a family history of bipolar disorder, if there's a personal history of bipolar disorder, schizophrenia, or schizoaffective disorder, if this is a person's first pregnancy, and if the person discontinued psychiatric medications for the pregnancy, these are all increased risk factors or increasing risk and that creates risk factors for the development of postpartum psychosis. What I really wanted to talk about though a little bit was the potential etiology or causes of postpartum psychosis, which is largely unknown. Like many things in psychiatry, we still haven't figured out this mind-brain connection and exactly how that all works, but we can point to a couple of things that we do know about the postpartum period and how that may relate to the development of psychotic symptoms. So those include genetic components, immunological components, hormonal factors, as well as the possibility of sleep deprivation. And sleep deprivation we know can be very important in patients with bipolar disorder. So I'll explain a little bit more here. So family studies of women with one or more episode of postpartum psychosis have found an accumulation of affective disorders suggesting that there's a family susceptibility to the development of postpartum psychosis. So again, it aggregates kind of in families, this, this idea of postpartum psychosis and also affective, affective disorders in general are kind of aggregating within families. So there's your sort of genetic component to why this may possibly be occurring. Now for the hormonal component, there's no specific abnormalities that have been identified. No, no hormonal abnormalities have been identified in, the post, in postpartum psychosis. But what we think could be the, the, the possibility here, the cause here, or how it relates, is that during the postpartum period, you have a rapid fluctuation or alteration in normal hormone, hormone production. So there's a normal fluctuation and changes of the, within, within this period that may trigger the event. So it could just be the standard normal fluctuations of hormones. Some people are more susceptible to them than others. 
There's also evidence of immune dysregulation. Two things have been found when you study postpartum psychosis is that there's specifically an overactivity of monocytes and macrophage arms of the immune system. What that means, it's hard to say, but there's obviously some disruption in the immune system. Could also be related to things outside of uh, psychiatric disorder per se, but this could be part of the, of the etiology. Sleep deprivation is probably the most interesting one to me. Uh, this may play a role in triggering postpartum psychosis. So there was a small study where they had 17 women who were diagnosed with postpartum psychosis and 17 controls. And they found that women who developed postpartum psychosis were more likely to have had a long duration of labor. They were more likely to have delivered during the night. And there is some evidence there to link that sleep deprivation as a result of that, creating more of a risk for the, for the development of postpartum psychosis. So an interesting small study needs to be re replicated, obviously needs more patients, but again, this is relatively rare. We said one to two per thousand births. And um, important to note that there is no evidence of a link between stressful life events and the development of postpartum psychosis. So nothing about stress seems to necessarily increase your risk of postpartum psychosis. Now the treatment, you might imagine it's gonna be similar well, first of all, it's a psychiatric emergency, and it's going to be similar to the treatment of any other psychotic disorder. So all psychotropic medications taken by a breastfeeding mother are passed to a nursing infant. So there's always some level of psychotropic medication that enters the breast milk. The benefits, obviously, of treatment versus no treatment need to be weighed. You need to weigh the pros and cons and the risks and benefits of the infant exposure if the mother is choosing to breastfeed. Now, antipsychotic medications are generally first-line treatment for psychosis and agitation in the postpartum period. Those would be things that we would normally use what we call dopamine blocking medications or second-generation antipsychotics. Things like quetiapine, risperidone, or lanzapine are examples. In addition to antipsychotic medications, you also may prescribe other medications like benzodiazepines, mood-stabilizing medications, or antidepressants based on the diagnosis and the specific symptoms that are being shown or that, or that are being revealed. So I'm going to wrap the video there. You know, just to kind of summarize this whole thing, postpartum psychosis is relatively rare. It's a much higher or greater risk if you have a diagnosis of bipolar disorder or family history of bipolar disorder. A lot of patients that develop postpartum psychosis often either already have an established diagnosis of bipolar or go on to develop bipolar disorder in the future. It presents with the similar symptoms that we would think of in any psychotic disorder, such as schizophrenia, where there's delusions, hallucinations, disorganized thinking, disorder, disorganized speech, etc. And it's treated in relatively the same manner as any other psychotic disorder would be as well, and that would be treatment with dopamine blocking medications primarily as the first line option, and then potentially using mood stabilizers or antidepressants, etc depending on what the symptoms are and how the patient presents. Obviously, it's very important to weigh the risks and benefits of treatment, but because postpartum psychosis is a psychiatric emergency and does pose risk to the newborn baby, as well as to the mother who has to care for that baby, it's important to get treatment and timely treatment is going to be essential in these cases. If you guys have questions or comments, please drop them below. Please like and subscribe to the channel so that we can continue making content like this. And I, if anyone's interested, I will cover postpartum blues and postpartum depression in the future if that's a topic of interest.